I'm gonna jump right into some stuff right here. That's a finished ring with an emerald cut diamond. But one thing we did not mention out of all this is the shape of the diamond. That might also come into play under cut, the shape of the diamond. But I was just trying to give you a general idea of how important to have a properly cut diamond is for a round diamond. There's also the shape of the diamond. The shape of the diamond in this particular situation is the emerald cut. It's a rectangular stone and the facet arrangements according to the cut are step cuts. You could actually look at it and the emerald cut diamonds look like there's little steps where you're kind of like climbing in or out of the stone. These long lines this way and then this way, right? Compare that to this one, which is an elongated cushion. Also an elongated stone, but you could tell this is a different facet arrangement. This one will sparkle differently because of the brilliant facet. It's a, this is a brilliant cut and this is a step cut. The brilliant cut does not have these long lines. It has a bunch of little triangles and trapezoid shapes and each one of them sparkles when you rock it back and forth. Let's, let's get into, uh, let me give you some information about the first one I mentioned, which is the, the emerald cut here. It's a 10 carat. You want to get an idea what a 10 carat emerald cut looks like on, on the finger? I'll put it on my pinky. And that's a 10 carat. 14 and a half millimeters by 10 and a half millimeters. That's the length and the width. When you're dealing with fancy shapes, there's another thing that you need to consider that you don't have to worry about when you're dealing with round diamonds. That's usually the length to width ratio. Everyone likes a slightly different shape. Some want them really long and thin. Some want them a little bit more squarish. So to figure out the length to width ratio, you take the length divided by the width and that's your ratio to one, right? A square diamond would be a one to one length to width ratio. Something rectangular is like a 1.3, 1 1.4, 1 1.5 to 1. Next is the cushion. It's a J color VS2. Sorry, no. Yeah, it is a J color VS2 and it's 10 carats. Both of these are 10 carats. This is a J color, this is an F color. To compare color, you want to take a white background. I'll do that. I just have this handy. Let's see if we could look look through the material on a white background. You'll see which one has color, which one has more color. Look from the top. You're gonna to have to get up on the top. I don't know if you're seeing that. This is more. This has more color, this is a little bit more colorless. That's the comparison of a J with a F. All these little diamonds here, by the way, are set using micro pave technology, which means I'm setting all these little diamonds zooming in under a microscope. So when you zoom out, you don't see the diamonds being held into place. It looks like magic, but it's all done. It's very delicate work, all done by hand. And it's worth doing if you want to create a masterpiece because you want your diamond sometimes to look as big as possible. So you create an optical illusion, a thin band that's still durable, and you want to encrust that with diamonds, but you don't want to see too much metal. This one, on the other hand, is a three stone setup where I have trapezoid shapes, also step cut, just like the emerald cut, side by side. And you can mess around and you can play around. Maybe you want bigger trapezoids on the side. Maybe you want, well, I wouldn't go any smaller than this for a diamond this big, but you can play around with the shape of the side stones to give you different looks. We can also compare some loose. This is a cushion cut. That's one. This cushion cut is seven carats, GVS2, seven and a quarter, GVS2. And I'll put that away for a quick second. And here's a five carat. Here, look at this one. Also a cushion cut, 5.2 carats. But not all cushion cuts are exactly the same. If I put them side by side, look, 
they don't really have exactly the same shape. Pay attention, this is almost oval looking. And this is almost, uh, and this is more like a, kind of like a soft rectangle. But both are categorized as cushion cuts. So when you're dealing with fancy shapes, things get a little bit, um, the artist behind the wheel, the artist who's doing the cutting, he sometimes does his own version of whatever they modify it. It's called a modified cut, right? One more thing I could show you is uh, fluorescence. Fluorescence is one more thing I could show you. This is a UV, I have a little handy LED UV light. See that? Diamonds sometimes have different reactions. This one is showing me fluorescence. And if I pay attention to the certificate, the GIA certificate, it does have fluorescence, as a strong fluorescence. It's reacting to the UV light. That's gonna give it a little bit of a, uh, uh, more of a, the blue may show up definitely under a black light, but also it'll make your diamond look a little bit whiter in the sun, in natural light, if you have a, if you have a strong blue fluorescence. Uh, let's see if we could kind of go somewhere in the dark. Look what happens when as you have a strong fluorescence and you, and you have a UV light, ultraviolet light. The side stones don't have that fluorescence. The center stone does. Right, now I'm gonna do that test with the other diamond that I have mounted in a ring. And you tell me if you think you could guess the fluorescence on it. I just cheated, I looked at the certificate and now I'm actually gonna do my test. Here I go. Comment in the comment section, what do you think the fluorescence on this cushion is? Because there's different intensities for, for the fluorescence. There's very strong, there's strong, there's medium, there's uh, none, and there's faint. Thanks for watching, folks. This is Mike Necht. If you have any questions regarding diamonds, call me. If you're looking for big, beautiful diamond rings, that's my specialty. 10 carats, 15 carats, 20 carats, 100,000, half a million, 1.5 million, by all means, hit me up. Very few people in the world can help you with these types of requests at the prices that I can. I'm very competitive and I'm out to get more clients. That's what I'm interested in, creating relationships. I'm building this business so the next generation can take over with a whole list of high-end clients. This is a business that started almost 50 years ago by my grandfather and he, just, he was a simple watchmaker. The next generation took the business to a certain level. My generation is taking it to another level and we have high hopes. We're trying to take it to even greater level. We're looking to be dealing with people that are interested in super high-end, humongous diamond jewelry. Thanks for watching, enjoy the view, and I'll talk to you later.